All right, well, you all quieted down very quickly. So, <laughs> so good morning, everyone, and welcome to the five-year anniversary of Making History Transcribe, um, our crowdsourced transcription project. At times, it seems unbelievable to me that it's been five years. How did we get here? Well, primarily, we got here through making great partnerships. Um, and even though I'm going to talk about some specific partners, you in this room, you are also our partners. The public is really our most important partner in this effort. So Hands-On Greater Richmond, which has um, organized this event here today, has been a wonderful partner for us, helping us coordinate two transcribathons per month and continually grow our volunteer base, that's you all, um, since January 2015. We've also partnered with school libraries throughout the state to reach some of our younger transcribers. And all of this work continues to be funded by IMLS. So we launched Making History Transcribe quietly in August 2014 and waited to see what the public response would be. Some of you were there early on, finding the project through social media or our website. We were thrilled by how well everything went and continues to go. So what happens after success? Um, we quickly realized that this little project had a lot of potential. We were able to increase our staff and ask other, uh, other areas of the library to participate. What started as a small experiment began to grow and involve more and more collections as well as the archivists who support them. So if you've come to any of our events, you probably know Kathy Jordan, Jesse Bennett, or myself. We're the ones that are mainly running the transcribathons, but people throughout the library are really supporting this project from all different areas. So there can't be crowdsourcing without the crowd. And each time you show up or participate from home, you're helping make Virginia history more accessible. We try to show our appreciation through buttons and mugs and t-shirts, but I think a lot of you do this because you also believe in what we're doing. And feeling like we're building something together is really the best reward of all. But I mean, I, I still hope you enjoy the t-shirts because we like them, we think they're fun. <laughs> so each time you tweet or share about our project, it really helps others in your life know that this is something important. We just lost the internet. Hang on a sec. Ooh. Well, I think this may be rebooting or something is happening. We'll try again. So when we first started this project, we didn't yet know you. And we didn't know who would participate. Sometimes we talk about our different user groups, but really I think transcribing can be fun for anyone. And we get all types of volunteers, as you can see by looking around. And just to talk about some of our users quickly, we get a lot of younger folks, which is great. Uh, we love having young people come to the library. And a lot of them have required community service hours to graduate high school. That was a surprise to me. Um, we had one young man who organized a transcribe-a-thon at his high school for his Eagle Project in our first year. Many of them also love history and connect to the mission of expanding history by including more stories. And we see a lot of parent-child teams, which is also inspiring. I don't know if we have any here today. And we also have a lot of young professionals that come to volunteer. And those are basically my peers. So I try to think about what gets me out of the house, because there are a lot of things I want to do, but sometimes it's hard to just get out the door and go do it. So. We had to make these transcribathons also convenient, and that's why we started doing the Wednesday evening events. Um, and we get some people who work downtown and come by after work, and that's great. So history can also be surprising, which I think a lot of us have learned by doing this project. It's not always what you learn from a textbook. We also get a lot of older volunteers. Shout out to everyone that is here. You all are tech savvy, some of you more so than me, and you show up, which is incredible. And older folks also tend to be more adept, on average, at reading difficult handwriting. They've had more practice. <laughs> and if you are newer to reading old handwriting, don't worry, it'll get easier, and we're gonna give you more tips today. So occasionally, you'll get a really superstar volunteer that really helps you throughout all the stages of your project, who's interested in the history and the technology and the data, and that is Nat Wooding. Is Nat in the room? 
I saw him here earlier. Nat's here. <laughs> Thank you, Nat. Um, so he's been a great resource for us, always willing to test new developments in the technology and delve into the history of a new collection. So as many of you already know, Making History is no longer just one website. We've now expanded to a second website called From the Page, which allows us to transcribe government forms. So right now, we are transcribing the World War I questionnaires, which were filled out by returning soldiers or their families. We've also been using another site, Virginia Chronicle, which you may be familiar with. This is the access point for Virginia's historic newspapers, but it's also a crowdsourcing project. The searchable text is made by a computer program called OCR, or Optical Character Recognition, kind of a mouthful, but that tries to recognize each printed letter in those old newspapers. And if you've ever looked at them, you know that there are going to be a lot of mistakes in what the computer program can read. So correcting that text has always been part of the platform, and we're making it available to you all today as another one of our crowdsourcing projects. I will attempt to demo the sites if we can get the computer back up and running. But I might have to wait a minute. All right, I'm going to demo them in a minute. <laughs> but thank you all for joining us. Um, as you entered, you should have picked up a schedule. Um, and this is going to tell you all about the different presentations you can see today. One of our signature collections on Transcribe is Virginia Untold, the African American Narrative, which includes documents related to free and enslaved African Americans in Virginia. Greg Crawford will decode some of those abbreviations and those phrases commonly found in those documents. I know those have been a source of much curiosity and at times frustration for you. Paige Newman from the Virginia Museum of History and Culture will discuss Unknown No Longer, which was sort of their complimentary project, which we have now brought into searching in Virginia Untold. And after a quick photo at noon, we'll um, eat some lunch, and there's an optional tour of the library at 1230. If this is your first time here, please go on the tour. And you'll notice a big new collection at the top of Transcribe, um, the records of the Equal Suffrage League of Virginia. And at 1 p.m., we'll hear about that and the upcoming exhibition around, around women's suffrage. At 1.30, uh, Jesse will go over the big picture and how all of this transcription work is really changing our collections. So until then, we'll have some tips on reading old handwriting for our newbies. And please listen in. If you'd like a quieter room to work in, you're welcome to go back to the computer classroom, which is where we typically have our transcribathons. And the orientation room is also um, across the hall is open. So I'll try to get the computer back up and running, but you can just start working by pulling up the sites. Um, you'll find the website on the back of the postcards on your table if you're unfamiliar with it. And raise your hand if you have any trouble. We have plenty of library staff floating around to help you.